what do I do when there is confusion spiritually and physically in a school fellowship? If there is confusion in a school fellowship, um, my first question to you would be, what are you in the fellowship? It will help me um, answer the question properly. Are you the fellowship president? Are you a leader? Are you a worker? Or you are just a member? Second thing is, what do you call confusion? How did you arrive at the point where you feel that there is spiritual confusion? Um, is it your perspective? Is it your idea? Do you feel this fellowship is not being run properly? Do you feel that there is a um, difference of opinions? What do you call confusion? Because for me to answer that question blanket is going to be very difficult for me because I don't know what you are calling confusion. Because it's possible that you are the one even causing the problem. <laughs> it's possible. That you are seeing things different from the way the leadership sees things. Mm. You are listening to messages from people and you are forming opinions. Remember that school fellowships are normally extensions of denominations. Denominations have dogmas, they have liturgies, they have um, patterns and principles in, way in, in which they want their fellowships to run. And then you are listening to things, you are attending places, so you have ideas and you feel that the fellowship is confused. So it's very difficult for me to answer that question. But if there is a genuine spiritual problem in a fellowship, the first question will be who provides spiritual oversight for the fellowship? Who is the spiritual leader of that fellowship? Because I know that apart from the fellowship executives, there will normally be a patron or a matron or a spiritual leader. Your first point of call when you notice that there is a problem is to go to that person and say, we are having this issue, we are having that issue, and that is the way it should be managed. I teach people that um, if there is a spiritual problem, you cannot fight a structure you are part of. You must know how to channel your complaints properly so that it can be properly addressed so that whoever is on, in authority will handle your concerns and bring order to the fellowship. If you attempt to take laws into your own hand, most likely you'll be, you'll be trying to solve the problem for a, from a point of rebellion. Every effort you will make will be considered rebellious. So go to whoever provides oversight over the fellowship and let them know that you have identified such and such as a problem and let it be addressed at that level. If you are a fellowship leader, I believe that you have fellowship leaders meeting. You can go first to your president privately to say, see what I have identified. Because there are things you can identify, identify and you don't have the authority to correct it. So you must respect the structure, the authority structure. Go to the president one-on-one. -on -one. I teach people also that you, what you might be saying might be right, but not knowing how to say it will damage what you want to say. Because when, um, let me say, corrections are coming from the bottom, they come as suggestions. When they are coming from the top, they come as law. So you must know where you belong in the strata. So that when you are saying it, you know how to say it so that it can be accepted. Sometimes for it to be accepted, it needs to be said privately. So you go to the leader, the president, talk privately. And then if you notice that he admits that there's a problem and is not doing anything to solve it, for instance, cases of sexual immorality, things that are serious issues that have the capacity to damage whatever God is doing, you try to discuss it privately, it's not being done, then go to the one with spiritual oversight. How